Hey friends, welcome back to that 1870s homestead. My name's Rachel and today we are talking about sweet potato slips and starting sweet potatoes. And I'm just doing some regular management. I do this, I don't know, right now it's at a pace about twice a week. Uh, but today is some very specific management because let me find a jar that might be the worst. I don't know, maybe this one. You can see that jars, the water's kind of getting green and gunky. We're just going to rinse out our jars, give them some fresh water, rinse off the roots a little bit if there's like some algae buildup. And that's going to be one of the maintenance tips. But I'm going to talk to you guys throughout this video about starting sweet potato slips and kind of if you're following along uh, with us, we posted when we started these, let me pause the water. Uh, we posted when we started these early February on Instagram and Facebook. We didn't do a video on it, but I have done videos on it in the past. And so if you're following along with us, maybe you're wanting to see the behind the scenes, how is Rachel managing her sweet potato slips? So before I get into it, I have jars and jars and jars. So many, I have five jars of slip started. So we're going to go through these. I'll give you a status update where we are. And um, I have a couple duds, like non-producers that I'm going to talk about. So hopefully you'll find a lot of inf interesting information about that. But first off, come down here and to my sink. Let's use the dishes. And we're just going to give, first off, these roots a little rinse. I'm sure it would be preferable to use non-city water, but that's what we have. Just giving them a little rinse, nothing too heavy. Just trying to get any algae buildup off. Okay, set that aside. And then I'm going to do a quick clean of my jar. There we have it. I know a lot of people ask how much sweet potato itself is in the water. I would say probably two or three inches is all I do of the sweet potato in the water itself. And then over here, earlier before I started the video, I have tons of slips, the starts of vines. Um, and this is going to be what we're going to plant in the garden, but we want to get roots established on them first. So I'm going to go through that process with you guys. But first I want to just take the time to, like this one is really green, get my, um, just some cleanup done on the plants and the jars themselves. Okay, now one of the things I had somebody try to follow along and commented, this doesn't work, I gave up. And it's a, quite a process. That's why you start so early. Um, I think that they said that they gave up either after a couple weeks or a month. And they only maybe just had roots starting or hadn't had any. It can take literally that long for good root development to start. So, um, you know, I probably saw roots starting, you know, just little nubs maybe after two weeks and then kind of cut some good root development after a month and then your slips really start growing so it's a process that's why they say start you know three four months before you're going to plant them out because then you got to start your slips and get those roots developed so I know other people use the soil starting method and I believe that that if you're successful with that that goes a little faster maybe two to three months so um, but exactly why we start really early so if you are one of those individuals and you felt like it wasn't working for you you might not just have waited long enough um, it is a very true test of patience so here's one too that's a good example where I've gotten comments like it's starting to shrivel up at the top. Can you guys see that? It's really like shrivelly. 
And these guys were started with two year old sweet potatoes from my pantry. I grew these in the season of 2022 and they've just been stored down in the basement. So they already weren't like excellent sweet potato condition. But as you can see, even though it's shriveling, I'm still getting slips growing off this one. While it's not a lot, um, it is producing for me. So just hang in there. If it ends up just like completely rotting away, yeah, I'd probably just toss it. But if it's uh, producing for you, let it go. Okay, now this one is a good example for a positive reason because I've harvested many times off this one already. So can you see this cut mark here, cut mark there, multiple cut marks. And that is why I cut with scissors rather than pulling off from the sweet potato because the same spot will continue to produce more and more slips. So here's another example. And you can see that there's like a baby growing right here. Can you guys see that? Bring it in closer. So I choose to, um, the first year I didn't know that trick and I just pulled them off the, you know, like you've just bend them off the sweet potato and the whole thing comes off. And somebody taught me to cut them and I can't remember who. And uh, smart, because then you'll just keep harvesting and harvesting off from that same little shoot spot. So another tip for you but we're about to get to one of my duds. So I'll show you kind of why I'm choosing to give up on that one. So this I'm saying is a dud. He's pretty mushy, but not a reason I would throw him away. But every time he tries to grow something, it dies off. It's like obviously not a healthy plant. There is one nice one growing down here, but I think I'm just gonna give up on this one and toss him to the compost. So we'll say sayonara, good try, not worth my time to manage. And um, I have plenty of great producing ones. So kind of another reason why you may want to, if you didn't do it this year, um, start extra sweet potatoes next year, just in case one doesn't produce well for you, you've got options. All right, two more to clean up, and then we're going to, whoops, talk about our actual um, slips themselves. Super exciting. While I was doing sweet potato slips with you guys, there was a knock at the door, and we have a fun new package from our Greenstock partners, an all new style. Look at that. It's called their basket weave. Isn't that beautiful? Wow, this seems deeper, the watering well. I'm not sure it is, um, but guys, this is going to be 35% off today. Starts Tuesday, I don't know what the date of that is. Tuesday, aw, they always send the sweetest cards. Oh, I can't wait. We're doing our kale and salads and lettuce greens in our green stock this year. Let me pull it out. so beautiful it matches my rug <laughs> how nice is that so nice and so yeah if you're not familiar with these they're vertical planters that you can plant a ton of food guys and and green stock makes um uh this is the regular like depth um i think it's just a regular de depth but they also um, have one called a leaf planter um, that is better for salad greens and things like that but I wanted this so I can use it for lots of things um, and probably my greatest test in growing in green stalks was a couple years ago I actually grew cabbage and cabbage quite well in my green stalks which you would think would need a lot of space and they looked so beautiful in it um, you can just grow so much food in it so it's perfect for 
folks that have apartments, um, you know, condo living, uh, so very small backyards, but you want to grow a lot of food. So maybe you only have room for a couple raised beds, add a couple of these to it. Um, we just hand me down one of our originals to our daughter-in-law and uh, because she has uh, urban backyard lot and she wants to grow more food than she has space for so she's going to be growing in one of these and I look forward to, god that is gorgeous three colors I think it's coming in this is maple and then there's stone which is like a like if you picture patio paver stone and then um, evergreen so all of these these aren't a limited edition they're going to keep them in stock but 35% off this week. If you use our discount code, you get another $10 off. That takes this one, for example, that I'm holding down to $99. So super affordable. Maybe you're thinking about Mother's Day gifts in advance. Great Mother's Day gift to get on order and look forward to using it. Thanks, Green Stock. And I uh, hope you guys are, if you're in the market, really like this design. That is so stunning. All right, back to sweet potatoes. Okay, so I have three jelly jars of shorter slips going, and that's usually how they start. Um, I will pull them off when they're about four, I don't know, four to five inches. Let me just hold up my hand so you can see. Yeah, almost a full palm, almost. And then we start them in uh, just a little jelly jar of water. If they're longer than that, I'll put them up into say a pint sized jar. So some of these are a little bit longer than that. And then as they grow and get much, much bigger. So here's a taller one, I'll hold up my hand again. So taller than my hand, you'll see all its nice little roots growing, big root. We will pot them up into, pot them up, vase them up, I guess is a better term, um, into a quart jar. And so I have, let's count them and see where we're at after probably a month and 10 days of since we first put our sweet potatoes in the water. So I've got one, two, three, four, now this is an interesting one. I can show you something. So even though this all looks like one right now, um, if this was to divide really well and grow really strong, I can see that I have roots growing off this stem, roots growing off this stem and this stem, which is basically looks like one root, but as it grows up, I could probably divide this into three different plants. So let's see how many we got in here. One, two, three, four, like here's a great example of where this is going to grow. Oops, let me bring it down. I'm going to be able to easily divide this into two. One, here's another great example of uh, one that I can possibly divide. It's just got so much root development all over. One, two, three, four. And sometimes I'll divide them straight off the plant. Um, and maybe, I don't think I have an example of that today, but we'll see. So that was, what, about 18? 18. And I usually have in the past planted, I need to give these the ones a rinse, planted about, uh, I don't know, around 40 slips in my garden. This year I'm aiming for like 100. So we're right at close to 30 already, and we have a long time to go. So we will be growing these indoors until, <clears throat> until like May, end of May sometime. So just depending on weather forecast, these are uh, tropical style plants. So they wouldn't go out till the soil temps are like 70 degrees. So if my weather forecast in May is great, we'll plant them out then. If not, we'll wait till the end of May, early June. All right, so I have a brand new set going in. And this is very typical of a harvest. So we have one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine. And that takes me to right about 40, which is my standard. So here I am a month in or so, and we've got our quota. So what I'm doing now is I'm just picking off any little bottom leaves where the stem's going to be in the water. Um, just because they don't need to be in there, just causes that algae growth and yuckiness and decay in the water. And then we're gonna plop these in the water and I'm gonna show you how, uh, where I'm growing them and as soon as we wrap up here. So this is a good example. If you can see those little white nups, that's where roots are gonna grow. And kind of as they get crowded and start growing, I then space them out into other jars. So, no roots, but they will come. Let's head over to their little growing station. All right, so I have them growing, and I moved them in here once I started seeing roots develop. They had just been in my kitchen windowsill, but this is just an indoor tent, little greenhouse that I have sitting over my uh, furnace register and it stays really nice and warm in here. Now I don't zip it up or anything like that, but they love the heat. Once I put them in here, they just took off. So they are, like I said, a tropical style plant, so heat loving. Um, if you can give them really good light and heat, they're really gonna take off for you. Okay, now I try to put all of my vines up at the top where they're not gonna block too much light from the slips that are growing underneath. So let me get you guys out of the way. So because they're taller, now I could raise these up, I guess a little bit, there's not much room for them to grow, go, but I'm trying to space them in between the grow lights on the shelves below and they're reaching for the light above. And I can, do this right now easily while tomatoes and peppers aren't growing in here. But once those tomatoes and peppers need to come in the greenhouse, I'm gonna be challenged for room. So thanks for coming with me on my sweet potato update. While we're here, you guys wanna see an update on the cabbages are looking great. We have sunflowers growing for the chickens the celery. So things are happening good. If you didn't have success or you didn't try it this year, keep trying it. Um, don't give up on yourself. Like I said, be patient. It's a process and um, you'll get it. So I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for coming with me today.